Athens, 5th century BC. After winning a war against its Persian enemy, Athens became the cultural and democratic beacon of the Hellenic world. The Greek city was a thriving community and the home of the arts, philosophy, a vibrant social life and avant-garde political ideas. Just as Greek civilization was at its peak, Sophocles staged the play Antigone. Neither before nor since has there been a better representation of the accomplishments and contradictions of life in Athens than this drama. Halfway between public intellectual and rock star, Sophocles penned works that have become integral to the canon of Greek drama. During his life, he was politically influential as an appointed official, a keeper of sacred artifacts, a war hero, and a writer of 123 tragedies. Two-thirds of his plays won first prize in Athenian dramatic competitions. He never placed slower than second. Antigone begins at dawn. Eteocles and Polynices, sons of the cursed former king Oedipus, have murdered each other in a great battle over the throne of Thebes. Polynices had attacked the city when it was held by his brother. Acting as king, their uncle Creon has issued a proclamation upon pain of death that Eteocles shall receive a sacred burial, while Polynices will be left for the dogs. This was the customary punishment for traitors in 5th century Athens. Enter Antigone, sister of the dead men. Telling her sister as many, the Creon proclaimed himself the new king of Thebes. Antigone intends to bury Polynices in defiance of the king's command, and asks her sister to help her. Ismene, frightened, says no. Antigone has to bury him alone. A guard fearfully informs the king that someone has thrown sand on Polynices' body, thus performing the rite of burial and disobeying his order. Furious, Creon commands his soldiers to track down the offenders. Antigone is brought in chains to Creon's palace, she accepts responsibility for the act, claiming that she honored the will of the gods, who are far above Creon by burying her brother. Livid, the king denounces her failure to respect his orders, especially because she's a woman. He condemns Antigone to be buried alive in a cave. Although she is his niece, matters of state prevail over familial affections. After the dire prophecies of soothsayer Tiresias and the chorus, the king relents and reverses his order, deciding to bury Polynices and free Antigone. It's too late though. She has hung herself in the cave. Antigone's death drives Hymen, Creon's son and her betrothed, to his own suicide. Creon's queen Eurydice soon follows. When a messenger informs him of the news, the king realizes the gravity of his mistake. He proclaims himself the murderer of his son and his wife, and calls death upon himself as the tragedy ends. The philosopher Hegel wrote, Among all the fine creations of the ancient and the modern world, and I am acquainted with pretty nearly everything in such a class, the Antigone of Sophocles is, in my judgment, the most excellent and satisfying work of art. Antigone illustrates the eternal conflict between the human and divine law. In ancient Greek, respectively, the realms of Nomos and Genos, King Creon embodies human law and is bound to enforce it against traitors of the state. Antigone defies Creon's authority, calling upon her greater obligation to her family and the gods. For me, it was not Zeus who made that order, nor did that justice, who lives with the gods below, mark out such laws to hold among mankind, nor did I think your orders were so strong that you, a mortal man, could overrun the gods' unwritten and unfailing laws. Not now, not yesterdays. They always live, and no one knows their origin in time. The young woman's role as a dissident breaks a variety of social and political norms. This is particularly true in ancient Greece, a completely male-dominated civilization. Antigone rejects male authority and is harsh in judging her sister Ismene, who agrees with her but decides to respect her own subordinate role as a female. At the time of Antigone's staging, we can imagine that the characters and conflicts of the play invited citizens of the fledgling Athenian democracy to ask compelling questions. What is the relationship between power and justice? What are the limits of the law? Does one have to oppose the injustice perpetrated by the state? Is martyrdom a useful form of resistance? Can the state justify enacting punishment on the dead body of its enemy? 
How is Antigone different from the typical Athenian stereotype for women? How is she the same? Every era has responded differently to these issues, and every era has produced its own Antigone. Among the innumerable interpretations of this Greek play, Antigone has embodied the heroine of the anarchists, according to the Live Theatre 1967 representation in Krefeld, Germany. She is a symbol for the feminist movement in Judith Butler's book Antigone's Claim, and a model of pure desire, according to the interpretation of the French psychoanalyst Jacques Lacan. These are just a few examples of interpretations through the centuries that might have delighted or appalled the Athenian audience of Antigone's premiere in 442 BC.